a beautiful, neat piece of meat. So I like to trim my own brisket. Let me determine how much fat I want to take off and how much I want to leave. Oh, there, honey. Oh, yes. Hey y'all and happy Friday. Here we have it. Remember we already have one video where I showed you how to transform a whole fully fat brisket, clean, prep, and trim it and make it a neatly trimmed brisket. This is the follow-up video where I've smoked and sliced it for you guys. Enjoy. We went to 2.5. A little bit more to go. I think it's safe to say we had three pounds of fat. Let me know down in the comments. How many pounds of fat did I skim off this 13-pound brisket? Remember, it was 13 With pounds. With our lime juice, you can also use lemon juice, but I had lime on, on hand. And so I always use some form of an acid, whether it be lemon juice, lime juice, or vinegar. Right now, and then I use holes. salt. This is a great thing to do to thick pieces of meat like this. I also do this to my roast. I don't cook roast very often because it's not... A favorite of mine. But when I do cook a roast, especially if I'm putting it on the smoker, I always do this step, y'all. I always put holes in the meat. Make them pretty deep. Because you don't want your garlic to come back out. the garlic. You see how much better of a cleanup I have since I had this butcher paper down? Friday, and my son is here, so we want to have some free time to do us get this brisket in the freezer. Brisket in the freezer. Brisket in the freezer. Brisket in the freezer. It's our truffle seasoning, our swine, and our roasted garlic. Like I said, I'm gonna put it in the freezer, and then when I kind of thought, I'll go back with nothing but um, and my ooey KG. And that's gonna be all she wrote. So I love the fact that I am prepping this brisket ahead of time. Like I said, cut it in half. Cut it in half and make it easy on yourself. And the neat brisket, see there, where there's this flap, all you had to do was go and take your knife and cut that flap off and then you would have two even pieces of neatly trimmed brisket. You see how beautiful this is? Beautiful. Okay, y'all, so here I'm showing you the two pieces. I sliced it in half, and you have two pieces. These are the pieces you'll see me smoke after I brought them out of the freezer three days later. So as you can see, the meat still has little ice flakes on the bag. It has just unthawed, and we're going to take it to the smoker. Oh, yes. Here, of course, I'm just using the kitchen shears. Um, it was the neatest way to get the meat out of the bags without disturbing the seasoning, quite honestly. That's why, that's why I cut the brisket out of the bag, honey, because I didn't want any of my seasoning to get rubbed off. It was full of flavor, y'all. Now, I just want to show you guys here, quite honestly, especially if you're familiar with the way briskets appear, you see I have trimmed almost all of the fat off of this brisket. Like I told you early on, I normally leave more fat than what I did this time. But since we were feeding such a large crowd for Christmas, I didn't want anybody to be turned off by the gelatinous fat. You know, some people are just completely against it. So I trimmed way more fat than I would have if I were just cooking this for myself. 
and my mom we prefer more of a okay fat cat. so let's talk cooking y'all now you can cook a brisket in the oven you can put a brisket on a grill or you can put it in a smoker it's your choice you know people are intimidated by brisket just because it's such a large piece of meat but it's actually very versatile um what i chose to do this time is to put it on the smoker just because there is an electric smoker very easy to use you'll see it it's a weber you plug it in and you have the dial on the front that shows you the temperature i chose to smoke this brisket um quite honestly i could have taken the brisket off sooner again it depends on who it is that you're feeding or if it's for you it depends on your preference i ended up putting the brisket back on the smoker once i put it in the foil and i let it sit just for a little longer to make sure i had a nicely lean but still moist and tender piece of brisket again if i were cooking this for myself i would have pulled the brisket sooner it's done either way you have different levels of doneness because remember this is beef just like a steak so it's done either way and even once you get to the point of well done on a brisket then you still can determine whether you want to cook it further based on whether you want to render out more and more fat again the goal with this brisket was to have a nice lean smoked piece of meat that did not have a lot of gelatinous fat on the end cap or marble throughout the longer you cook the meat the more fat will render from it the sooner you pull it the more fat you will still have and it will still appear within the meat and on the ends of the meat so um i just wanted to say that because there are different ways of doing it and i think what i'll do i'll insert um, another brisket that I cooked I'll show you snippets of that and so you can see the difference in how the brisket appears based on number one where you cook it whether it's indoors or outdoors number two whether you end up putting it in for packaging and number three how long you cook it how long do you allow that meat to be exposed to heat so that the fat continues to render off more and more fat will render off even once the meat is at the point of doneness so there are several things to be considered there now what i'm doing is as you can see it's a narrow cooking surface because this smoker is pretty narrow so i'm just trying to determine how i want to put the meat in the smoker since i can't put both pieces on the same rack um, i'm taking into consideration that one piece is thicker than the other so with that i'll determine which piece i should put the highest up and which piece I should put on the on the second rack also as you can see I have them staggered I was I'm staggered so they'll have they'll both have access to the same um, amount of heat and the same amount of smoke now you really can smoke anywhere between 200 220 and the highest 250 right here i always wanted to make sure it was at 250 at the highest i didn't go any higher than that i was in a bit of a rush i would have preferred to smoke it closer to 200 and 220 but i wanted to make sure that i could get it done in time so i let it run at 250. three two one Ooh, we honey. Ooh, we we have these two beautiful pieces of meat, baby. Smoke to the gods. I cannot wait to show you how these things slice up. There you can see we have just a very thin layer of fat on the top. Now this is the larger piece on the bottom. I'm holding the camera with one hand, y'all, and trying to get the meat with the other one. Thank you for bearing with me. It 
immediately i want to show you how tender this brisket is so i pull that little corner piece off look at <gasps> the elasticity there but because i use some coarse seasonings you still have a bit of crunch This was a total of about three hours on the smoker between 220 and 225 and 250 degrees. And during the last hour, I did envelop the pieces in foil for the last bit of smoking. That's just to make sure that it's tender. Had the brisket not been trimmed as much and had it not been marinated as long and as well, it could have taken longer to cook. So the thing to remember, if you're nervous about undercooking, just use a meat thermometer. What you don't want to do is overcook it. Once you burn something, there's no turning back from that. So low heat will guarantee that you don't dry it out and then don't overcook it. Just that simple. If it's underdone, you can always pop it in the oven. So at this point, the brisket was already perfectly done, but I went ahead and put some onion, cut up onion on it and put it back in the foil and just let the residual heat cook it a bit more. Because again, when you're serving a large crowd, it's better to go more towards done than underdone. Joe made this beat. Cases crowds, the channel you wanna say. We, we got, got the sweet and the savory, which one you wanna eat? Got some chicken and ribs, that's a movie KG. That's season of homemade, man, it puts you on your feet. Make you laugh and shout, not talking to a degree. Got a variety of food that I know you like to eat. If you wanna try it for yourself, hope you come and see. You can even come and get it. All we All do right, delivery. Y'all, so here is the Kiss finished crowns, product. We just wanna this be is the best the, at this. Uh, one food. of the pieces of meat, remember we split them in half. So I'm just talking to my son about being able to recognize the way the grain on the meat is running and to, to cross, cut it crosswise. So here we are, I had him to move on the other side of me. And you can see now, such a beautiful piece of meat. I apologize for the overcast, that's with him standing over it initially. But see, you can see, this is what I mean by almost all of the fat has, um, for the most part, rendered away from the brisket. You don't see fat present. You don't see fat marble throughout the brisket. However, the brisket is obviously tender. So the fat did its job in terms of keeping the meat moisturized as it smoked. And I don't know if you noticed it, but when I put the meat inside of the smoker, um, I put it in there with the fat side up. And that way, as the brisket continues to cook, see how that meat is just folding over? I mean, it was so, so, so super tender. But um, you put the fat cap up so that as the meat cooks, the juices, the fat from the fat cap on top can cook down through and actually penetrate the meat. Otherwise, if you had the fat side turned down, then the fat would come off the bottom of the brisket and fall straight to the bottom of the smoker. So when you have your fat side up on a piece of meat like this, that allows the fat to cook through and penetrate the meat 
therefore leaving it more moist and tender. But I'm showing you there the um, texture of the meat. Beautiful brisket. Again, the, you know, you have to do it based on your preference or the person who you're cooking it for, their preference. <sighs> it was delicious. And at this point, I'm taking the juices that were remaining in the fall. Remember, because I wrapped it. These are the juices from the fall, and I'm just pouring it on top. But this brisket was so delicious. I mean, you could eat it straight out of the refrigerator. It didn't even require warming. It was, it was really good. Now, my next brisket episode, I know I'll be cooking another one for you in the next um, month or so. I will show you the difference when I cook it for myself and for my home. I will show you the difference and how it looks when you pull it sooner and you leave more fat on the brisket while you're cooking it. Okay, so you basically end up with the same taste, but a different texture. That season of homemade, man, it puts you on your feet. Make you laugh and shout, not talking to a degree. Got a variety of food that I know you like to eat. If you want to try for yourself, Okay, so here is the other brisket I promised I would show you. This is um, a form of brisket that I cooked and I left much of the end cap or much of the fat cap, I should say, on it. So if you look at the very top, you can see that ribbon of fat going across the top. Plus you have the char from the direct smoke. So this brisket was cooked on an open grill, on a barbecue grill versus a smoker um, in direct heat. And that just means where I pushed all of the coals, all of the heat over to one side of the grill and I allow the brisket to cook on the other side. So based on how you cook it, what you use to cook it, how long you cook it, the brisket will differ in taste, appearance, and texture. Have it your way, baby. Thank you for watching Keisha's Crumbs. Until next time.